Cynthia Castillo. Um, I want to lift up Dr. Herman Jacobs' family. He was eulogized on yesterday. Uh, Eddie St. Jude, uh, Lisa Gasky. Uh, also, we'd like to lift up all the doctors and nurses that are still uh, on the front lines combating all the things we're facing. Uh, Alfred Eason, uh, Alfred Lyons, all the doctors and nurses, again, uh, Lizzie Minifield. Uh, Ethel Hardy, uh, that's the Tyrone Gibson, we'll lift him up. Uh, continue to pray for Reverend Rufus Wheat. Uh, a young man named Landry Valentine back in Liberty County, we'll lift him up this morning. Uh, Dr. M.A. Thomas and White Rock family. Uh, Sister Lynn Taylor, Harold Taylor, uh, Brother Johnny Bradford, Reverend Ryan. Uh, Willie, Ma Willie Matlock, Brother Hendrick. Uh, Brother James Jones Jr., and Brother James Jones Sr., and Sister Sherry Lynn Jones. Uh, Greg Love in Tennessee, Reverend Springs in Tennessee, Overseer, Pastor Overseer Springs in Tennessee, uh, A. Smith, A. C. Smith, Marcus Smith, uh, Candace Governado and family. I uh, continue to lift up Sister Cindy Landry this morning, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Travis Eskridge as well. Mm -hmm. um, Carolyn Peace in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, Rochelle Lowe in Cincinnati, Bobby Simon, who, uh, Raymond and Judy Wells, Sister M.A. Hardy, uh, Carla Casey, Keelan, Keelan, and Brother Kevin Casey, uh, Sister Leslie Easton. Again, we want to pray for all our schools and school teachers and children. Uh, also, we want to lift up Raymond Alderman, Sister Ruth Jones and family, Sister D. Shelton, Sister Princess Watkins, Jane Watkins, and Jerry Watkins. Brother C.K. Simon, uh, Deacon Wilbert Simon, as the family being challenged with bereavement. Uh, Sister Marie Eason, Samantha Eason, uh, Olga Hargrove, still going to lift her up. Uh, Brother Billy Lee Jr., Sister Janice Lee, Deacon Billy Lee Sr., uh, Jalen Janai Deskaya, Sister Jackie Coleman, Gloria Moore. Uh, Pastor L.C. Spikes in Hancomer, Texas, uh, w, uh, Dr. W.T. Morris, uh, Antoine Menifee, uh, Alvin Plantis Childress in Orange, Bill Wanitza in Houston, uh, Carolyn Carter. Also, we're going to continue to lift up the Bridge Crest Rehabilitation Center, uh, Eugene Glenn in Raywood, Texas, uh, Tasha Jackson, uh, Trisha Jackson in Ames, Texas, uh, Harold Glenn in Raywood, um, Terry Lee Lumpkins, uh, Sister Helen Harrison, well, Sister Divine, good to see you tapped in with us. Uh, Mike Landry Jr., and his family, Kim Gallagher, uh, Jerry Eason, uh, Shane Coleman, and Shane Graham. Uh, 
Vivian Brooks in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, we're looking at Marlon Lee, Sister Cynthia Armstead, the Lawton family, uh, Regina Kelly, Jackie Kendall, Dr. Rodney John, uh, Thomas Jr., Reverend Gary Charles, Terry Hewing, Charles Hewing in Tennessee, um, Sister Goody and her mother, Precious Carter in Florida, Albert Hanks in Florida, uh, Albert James Hardy, Marsha Hardy, uh, Viola Hardy, Letitia Gibson, uh, Kathy Lee, Robert Lyons, Floyd Lyons, Diane Hardy. Uh, anybody else's name like that to pray with us this morning? Sue Jones. Sue Jones? Stu. Stu, okay. Um, Anna texted me and said, asked if we could put Jan Kilgo from Tennessee on our project. Jan Kilgo? Jan Kilgo, K I L G O. Okay, Jan Kilgo. I'm going to throw her up to Tennessee. Sister Princess asks to add Sharon Parrish. Who? Sharon. Sharon. Parrish. Parrish. Okay. Thank you, Sister Princess. Brother Wilkin. Pastor, I'd like to put the garden family, the garden family, garden, and the Calvin family on the prayer list. Good evening. And also, I'd like to say thank you to the Oak Hill family for your prayer. My sister-in-law, Ava, uh, most of you know that she crossed over. And I just want to let you know that I appreciate Amen. all your prayers. Amen. Just keep your family in prayer. Amen. 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 Okay. It's praying time, brothers and sisters. Amen. And uh, I also want to pray for all the folks that have been impacted by these tornadoes that recently came through. Yes, yes. Uh, there was some total destruction. Uh, when those tornadoes hit the ground, and uh, it's just amazing all the different things that's going on. But we're going to lift them up as well um, because it could be us. Mm. Yes, yes, sir. It could be. Yes, Lord. Sister Lane. First of all, I want to give all praises to God this morning. To you, my brothers and sisters. I thank God for today in the midst of the storm. I still Amen. thank you. Amen. Uh, we want to let uh, Mr. Albert Hardy know that we appreciate him sowing into the Oak Hill Church family. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you Amen. for that. Amen. Uh, and uh, Miss Samantha Issa, we let her know we love her. Amen. She sows into the Oak Hill Church family on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So we just want to let her know that Amen. we love her too. I want to read this card that received in the mail at our home from a, I'm going to get a little, little emotional, y'all, but I'm okay. It's from a Big Jerry, Little Jerry's father. And it says, in memory of Jerry D. Eskridge, yeah. Reverend Landry and Oak Hill family, in November, when I was in Houston with my family, you treated us so good. I just want to say thank you for everything you did. I especially thank you for what you did for my son, Jerry. Reverend Landry, I thank you for the daily Bible verses and the Sunday sermons. They really encourage me. Oak Hill, please keep Reverend Landry and Sister Landry and family lifted up in prayer daily. A pastor has to have big shoulders to help lead the congregation as the Lord leads him. I personally thank the Lord for him. May the Spirit dwell at Oak Hill. Here is a gift from Tennessee. Be blessed and I always pray. Love you all, Jerry Eskridge. And he did send in, uh, I'm not going to announce what he sent in over the hour, but he did send in uh, 
a large sum of money, and we want him to know we appreciate him. Mm -hmm. And y'all heard Reverend Landry call his name out, hospitalized. He had to have emergency surgery. So y'all pray for him and his recovery and everything that he's going through because when you're going through something and then you have to have surgery, your body weakens and your mind weakens. So just pray for him. I talked to him and he was in pain. And Travis said, Mom, I don't know if it was the pain or scared. I said, it's probably a combination of everything. The pain, the scare, not knowing what's happening to you, what it is, and coming up on a year since he lost his wife next month. So pray for him, his strength in the Lord, that he will have this speedy recovery. His appendix did rupture, and he didn't realize it. So mm -hmm. uh, until it was too late, and they had to do this emergency surgery. But we're praying for him and believing God's going to lift him up off of his sick bed and put him back up on his feet again. So continue to pray for him. Amen. We love you. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Today's sermons will be coming out of 1 Peter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's all right, Pastor. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, giving our praise to God, to Dr. Landry, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I'm making an announcement for the day. We know it's coming up on our pastor's 15 year anniversary here at the Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And we got a few things that um, we want to get done before that day comes. And uh, Sister Eason has already received the welcome. She's going to do the welcome. Uh, the uh, occasion is still open. We're going to ask someone to do the occasion. And we're going to also have an uh, alternate just in case something happened or that person can't show up. Uh, Deacon Wilfred Simon is going to do the short talk on behalf of the pastor. And um, we have asked Sister Lynn to uh, do the announcement coming in of the escort, and she have accepted that. Asked Brother Casey to uh, read the proclamation and the present present presentation of the gifts, uh, and he's accepted that as well. So we still have um, the occasion open, and we like to get uh, someone to do that and also an alternate. Um, and at this time, we know we got four Sundays left in April, and uh, we want to also, you know, every year we usually do where we get up and speak on behalf of our pastor because we don't have the time to do that on that Sunday. So starting today, if anyone would like to, we can start today. It can be one a Sunday, two a Sunday. Maybe you want to be here a Sunday and you want to go ahead and say what's on your heart about the pastor. You're welcome to do that if you like. But we want to go ahead now and start getting prepared and getting ready for the pastor's anniversary on May the 1st. And um, the colors are going to be red and white if you like to, you know, go with the color scheme. It's gonna be red and white. And um, if, if you come up with something that you think that you would like to do or like to say, you know, these Sundays will be your time to get up and, and do that, you know, on behalf of our pastor and show him him and his wife some love at this time. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'll start since I see it. I guess I'll see it. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor, I'd just like to say that uh, I know we have been through a lot in these last two years. There's a lot of things that have happened. And um, I want to thank you for all the, the cell phone texts of the reading of the Bible because I know a lot of times I haven't uh, gotten to read my Bible, but every time a scripture comes through, my heart is lifted to know that I do take out the time at that time to read that scripture. And, and it makes me feel good. It makes my heart overjoyed just to know that 
if nothing else, if I don't do my part that day, I look, I look forward to seeing that text message, whether it be in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, that's the one minute, the one time that I take out the time of day to read that scripture. Whether I done read my Bible or not, it just inspires me that you care enough to send that because you don't have to do that. But just because you care, I thank God for you. I thank God for you being a part of our life and a part of our family. And um, I thank you for being the pastor that you are the caring pastor, and I thank Sister Landry, I thank you for walking by his side and standing by his side and being his backbone, because I know sometimes he gets weak too, and he needs prayer too, and he needs phone calls too, and he needs us to call him or text him sometime and encourage him, and I know a lot of times we don't, we don't always do that because we're all so busy about doing whatever we got to do in our schedules, but we need to take out a time and a day to say thank you and, and, and ask for prayers for our pastor and his wife and family, um, you know, sending up prayers to God for him also. And, and I just want to say, you know, I want to do better this year, better than I did last year, better than I did yesterday, better than I did the day before, of uh, giving God the glory and giving him the praise. Because it's easy to do it when you're going through something and when things are going on in your life. But what about when things are not going on? What about when things are going good? We still need to give God the praise. And we just thank God that we have a praying pastor that pray for all of us mm -hmm. and pray for our family and pray every time we call Reverend Landry and we need some prayer, we need some help. He always there to encourage us mm -hmm. and, and, and listen to what we need or what we're going through. And we have, and I'd like to thank you for being a shoulder and an and a ear to, to hear all our stuff that we have going on sometimes. Thank you, Reverend Landry, for your 15 years. shows me in volume how much you care about us. Because even though you're going through, you still shows us just how much you care about us. And I want to thank you for that. Because all that's on your back right now, I know. It ain't easy. Been there, done that. But nobody knows how you feel but you and God. And I want to thank you for taking out the time although you're going through, that you see to us. And you help us in so many ways when you send them daily scriptures. I know it's inspired by God, but when you send it to us, and we receive it as a family of the church, it helps us. You don't know what we're going through, but when you send these scriptures, sometimes the scriptures be right on point. Amen. Not even that you know that you're doing this, but you know that you're sending it because of what God has put in you. Amen. And I thank God for you because the love that you show towards us, I pray to God that we can give it back to you. Because you go out your way to do things like this to be saying. For family, family members that you don't even know nothing about, you'll show up if you can show up. You're going to speak if you can speak. Amen. You're going to pray for us at all times. No matter the work of what we are going through, what you going through, you put yourself on the back burner to see the us. And I want to thank God for that. And thank you for what you do, because you don't have to do it. And uh, yeah. Sister Lee, when you're talking about the occasion, I'll do the occasion. If Amen. I'm here at that time, I'll be glad to do it. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. of what God has instilled in you to put in me, Amen. to show the love that I have for you. Amen. Like, I'm, I'm standing right here now, and I'm going to tell you, I love you. Amen. And I'm not saying this in a funny way because the love that you show not only for me for my whole family amen i want to thank you you have been there through thick and thin although you was always suffering on the other side 
but you never showed that. Amen. You put that back, and you helped us to go through what we was going through, even though you're still going through. Right now, a lot of people don't know. Me and you talk a lot. I know, with deep in your heart, how you feel at times. But yet it's still, you don't show it. I want to thank God for you. And I want you to know that we love you, and we're going to continue to pray for you and your family. Because not only are you going through, because if you're going through, I know they're going through too. Because they don't want to see you go through. Amen. But God bless you and may he keep you. And we love you, brother. Stay on the wall. Amen. And our theme, I forgot to say, is pastoring in the midst of a pandemic. Coming from 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Amen. 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 Fourth chapter, verses 12 through 19. That's the first chapter? Yes, sir, first Peter. Fourth chapter. Fourth chapter. Fourth chapter. Fourth chapter. <clears throat> a little emotional right now, so look, Reverend in my voice. Thank you for the words. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. Amen. Amen. All the healing. We're ready now for the hymn of preparation. Jesus, getting us ready for that great day. Oh, Jesus, getting us ready for that great day. Oh, Jesus, getting us ready for that great day. Oh, Ready for that great day. Oh, he 
chapter, verses 12 through 19. Can we read, please? Beloved, think it is not strange concerning the fear of trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On your heart he is evil spoken of, but on your heart he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busy body in other men's lives. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if the earth begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteousness scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, to be the keeping of their souls to sin and well doing as unto a faithful creature. I want to use my subject this morning. Suffering produces obedience to the will of God. Amen. 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 Suffering produces obedience, obedience. Word. Uh -huh. to the will of God. Amen. Say that again. Suffering, Suffering produces obedience to, to the will of God. Sister Wheat, it's good to see you this morning. Sister Princess, Sister Hardy, and Sister Paul, God bless your heart as well. We're looking here at Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter's talking about suffering will keep us from sin, but Peter is saying more than that. Mm -hmm. So Hardy, Peter is saying is that we have been released from sin. Yes. That means that God has made adequate provisions for you and me to live the Christian life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. That makes a difference, Sister Lynn. Peter has made it very clear that we have been born again by the word of God. Yes. That's what a challenge is, Sister Marie. Even though it looks one thing, it's a difference, Brother Casey. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit of God, using the Word of God, will produce a Son of God. By you using God's Word, it's going to change your character. We are sinner saved by grace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it had not been for the Lord on our side, Amen. where would we be? Thank you. Amen. Peter says that God has made every provision for you to be born again. Now think about that. Peter saying, I see something. Now you know Peter was very vocal. Mm -hmm. And one thing about Peter, he understood. And one thing about it, it didn't take him long to tell you what was on his mind. Mm -hmm. And what he did, he reached back, and I'm going to give you Psalm 66 and 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring you the, the thought that got him going in his mindset. We see right here, so Sister Eason, mm -hmm. he said, For thou, O God, mm -hmm. hast proved us Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Mm -hmm. So we see right now, he's saying that that's the things you're going through. But he also said in 1 Peter 2 and 24, he said this, and watch this, what he says. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body, Sister Lee, mm -hmm. on the tree, mm -hmm. that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. Yes, amen. Peter doing some tall talking right amen. here. Yes, he is. He's saying the suffering you're going through, Brother Wilford, it, it's painful right now. I know how bereavement got his hands on you, and Sister Landry, how bereavement got his hands on you, and it's challenging and it's heavy. But he says again, who his own self bear our sins in his own body. Amen. And he did it on the tree. Yes, he did. 
Sister Hardy, that we being dead to sin. One thing about it, the wages of sin is what? Dead. Yeah. Our great grandparent, Abby Eve, dropped the ball back in the garden. Yeah. So sin has been running rampant in our lives. Yeah. That's why people are dying today. God's word means what he says. But he also says that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. The healing comes by what Jesus did for you and I. Amen. When he came from glory and he put on a, a body, that's what John 1 14 says, and the word became flesh. Come on. And dwell among us. And so he came down to do something for you and I. He came to feel the pain that you feel. Mm -hmm. He came to feel every emotion that you can go through. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he lived through it as a child and all the way through the 33 and a half years. What he came to do for you and I. So every emotion you're going through, he experienced. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suffering produces obedience yes, sir. Mm -hmm. to the will of God. Yes, Peter also said that. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and 18, he said this, Deacon Brother Lee Singh, he said, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, watch this brother Casey, that he might bring unto us, correction, bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Okay. Mm. The price that he paid for humanity goes beyond. That's why Genesis 3.15, he said that, that the woman's seed was going to bruise the devil's head. Yes. He saw back in Genesis redemption stories, Sister Hardy. He already made up in his mind from the war chest room of eternity past. He knew Satan was going to come into time, but he also had to, after his six days of rest and when man sinned, his rest was broken. From that point on, he started moving and put redemption story in place. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do it, he had to come and redeem us back to himself. Mm -hmm. That's why the suffering produces obedience to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Now look at for a chapter right here. Let's look at verse 1. Let's see what he says. It's, it's, it's something powerful because I gave you those background scriptures to be able to see what Peter was thinking. And help us understand what a Christian has to suffer and all that. But that is a way to help you do this. What did it say in verse 1? For much in his Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. What we see, for as much then as Christ has what? Suffered for who? Right. For us. Brothers and sisters, the vicarious suffering that he had to go through. Yeah. The wages of sin is death. He came to die. His whole objective was coming down to do the will of God. And here's the key right here. Everything that he did, Sister Lee, was for somebody else. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Everything that he did was for you and I. Yes. And brothers and sisters, our biggest challenge is we have not accepted truly in totality that Jesus loves us so much because if we did, we would keep beating ourselves up. We keep putting ourselves back in the mindset. And that's what we're going to find right here, he says. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with what the same what? The battle is in the mind. The battle resides in your left ear and your right ear. That's what the challenge is. When you read the word of God, God will give you some words of hope. Amen. He'll strengthen you, let you know no matter what storm you're going through. It's a reason why you're going through that because it's going to force us into doing, being obedient. Because guess what? As long as everything is going fine, you don't need the law. Right. You don't look for the law. Yes. But when suffering comes, Lord, where you at? Mm. Y'all need to pray for me. Even after a crackhead, a, a dope head, I need somebody to pray for me. You, right. can, can you get a prayer through? Yeah. See, when you get to that point when you need a prayer through, Come on, yeah. Brother Billy Lee Jr., we're looking at 1 Peter 4, chapter, verses 12 through 19. Suffering produces obedience to the will of God. Mm -hmm. God does not always explain to you 
what you're going through. But since creation, before in the beginning, in the war chest room of eternity, he already knew exactly what you were going to do because he chose you from eternity and he brought you into time. And he's already seen from past, present, and future everything you're going to do. Amen. He's made a way for you. you got to trust him. you got to believe him. It don't make sense. But I tell you, God's got a plan. Yes, sir. And God's ultimate plan is to have you spend eternity with him after you pass through this thing called life. Come on, man. So if this is nothing but suffering produces obedience. And sometimes you have no, I'm, I'm so glad for the whippings I got. Mm. <laughs> I'm so glad. Because they taught me some boundaries. Amen. I used to then like to come to old kids. Every Sunday I got a whipping, but they treat me. They don't treat I had a land that would grow so high. He got seven days to grow, and the next thing you know, it was cut down because it was wrapped around my bridges. Right. But I find I'm so glad yeah. for my seat getting heated up with that switch. Because it helped me to understand you've got to be obedient. You've got to teach somebody how to walk. Yeah. You've got to teach somebody how to talk. You got you just can't just, well, I tell people all the time, you're not your children's friend, you're the parent. Yeah. All right, amen. You gotta teach them right from wrong. Amen. In the penitentiary, they tell me, say, Reverend Landon, make sure you tell them to don't come here. Mm -hmm. If you don't teach your child to, and to, to stop doing what you're doing, when they wind up behind the boat, the, the locked up door, guess what? They're gonna beat them to death. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Gonna, I, I'm telling you what goes on in there. If you don't teach them while you can, somebody will teach them. Right. So it, it, it helps about being obedient because. In our nature, we want to go contrary. But I'm fine, right? I'm so glad when I find here that Peter's putting it in print for me today. He said, now, I need you to have the same mind for he that suffered in the flesh ceased from sin. In other words, what he did for us, he didn't say he wasn't going to stop from sin, but what he did, he redeemed us from sin. From sin. Right. He paid it all. Everything you're doing wrong, he paid it all. Amen. It don't make sense. But that's what he did when he hung on that tree. He was cursed. Why not see what verse 2 and 3 had to say? That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have brought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lavishness, lust, excessive wine, Revelance, banquetings, and a domino idolatry. Go ahead and give me verse 4 while you're there. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right speaking evil of you. So when you're looking at right here, the suffering produces obedience, most importantly, to the will of God. He says now that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to what? The lust of what? Of men. But to what? The will of God. That's what a battlefield is, brothers and sisters. Because people do not have a fear of who God is. They're going to do any kind of thing. And today, because in America, we can do this, we can do that. And we have elevated ourselves up to a deity. It goes back to idolatry. God's got a promise. Anybody that's giving him praise not giving him praise because you idolizing everything else. Whether it's you, your job, your money, your daughter, your wife, yourself, whatever it is, anything you put in front of God, God got a problem with. It. And I ain't got no problem telling you that because it's in God's word. And the reason why God got to put some heat in your seat to bring you back to him is because his will is non to perish. That's right. Amen. It's almost like pulling teeth with no Nova can. Right, right. Kicking and screaming. God got a blessing for you, but in our mind's eyes, it ain't what we want. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We have not consulted God. We have not conferred with God. God, is this your will for me? Mm -hmm. right. The reason why the thing that's going contrary and you're running a dead end street, brothers and sisters, because it's not God's will for you. Amen. You know I don't come praying and, and preach for no amen. amen. Because I'm telling you something that helps you because I'm talking to myself as well. Amen. And that's why he says right here, but to the will of God. So we find that Jesus came, even in the muster of the cross, when he got down to the garden, he looked at that muster of the cross. He said, Lord, if it's your will, remove this bit of cup. Amen. Even in the flesh, brothers and sisters, Jesus, when he pulled out the cognosis of Christ, 
when he pulled out his shell, when he came in the flesh, he looked and realized what he had to face, just like you and I. We don't want to change. Hmm. All right. All right. We don't want to change. We don't want to tell them nothing. We could whatever we got going on. All right. All right. I appreciate you in my business. I'm all right with it. That's what God's bringing around in your business this morning. The suffering produces obedience. The suffering you're going through is going to produce the will of God in your life. Because whether you like it or not, it's going to do it one or two ways. God's way or you're going to do it God's way. Amen. It's up to you. Amen. But we find right here in verse 3. For this time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of what? The Gentiles. So we look and we're going back on the backdrop of history. Peter's talking to an audience that understood this. It was a mixed crowd. Everybody wasn't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, That's the way it is in 2022. Everybody ain't saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. They say a lot of different things, but when you really be honest with yourself, are you really committed? Yes, are you really sold out? Are you really doing the best you can to do it? Thus, said the law. So you got to tell me God already knows. Even before 12, he's a discerner of thoughts and intent. He already has burglarized your thoughts. He knows your intent. He knows everything about you. The bad thing is you're fooling your own self. You're fooling your own self. And insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Say right here now, he says now, this, this is something here. He says now, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries, wherein we think it strange that he run not with them to the same excess of rot, speaking evil of you. In other words, we don't want nobody. Now, with being our friend, Cody he said, I ain't going that route no more. Yeah. But let me help you. When UFO, that's who I am. When I quit buying the rounds, when I quit smoking dope, when I quit raising all that came, and all of a sudden I kept my money in my pocket and quit going to them nightclubs and them crack houses and all that. They say, man, what's wrong with you? What What that happened to you? Amen. Amen. And now that I'm preaching, what's wrong with that hypocrite? Amen. I ain't got no problem talking bad about me. I got away from that rot. Uh -huh. Amen. Peter said it's a rot. It's like a hog going, I'm going to cut the boy. It's like a hog going back to his vomit. In the mug and mug, he likes him hanging out in the mug. You clean a hog up, kick him. We just had a fat stock show on rodeo. You take a hog from the mud hole, bring him to Houston, clean him up, and all of a sudden he went a blue ribbon. Guess what? He went fine. Everything is all right. Then you bring him back to the country where everybody else is in the mud. It's like, wait a minute. Pigs don't know they stink. Sometimes we don't realize. The thing that we're going through until we inject a new idea. Yes, yes, yes. And when you read God's word, God penetrates where you're at. Yes. And he helps you deal with you and the reality of the challenges of this thing called life. Yes. And the suffering produces no word. The suffering is rational between your will, between your left ear and your right ear, between, between what you want to do and what thus say the law. Amen. Amen. Everybody don't want to be obedient. Amen. Amen. And right now he says now. They speak evil of you because you didn't turn your life around. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, have you been accused of being a, a Christian lately? Where you just mind them Bible thumpers walking around here. I say, thank you for the compliment. All right, all right. I'm trying to help you out. You don't yeah. want it. I understand. I've been on that side of the fence. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, you can drag a rope all day long, but you can't push one nowhere. You can't make nobody get this. Amen. You can't make them. Amen. All I've learned to do is just show you and give God's word a voice. Mm -hmm. And it's up to people to make a decision to understand what did Christ do for you back in Calvary? Amen. Did he do something big enough and qualified enough for you to want to serve him? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the story Amen. of what God's Amen. all about. Mm -hmm. Let's see what verse 5 through 6, 5, five 6, and 7 has to say, please. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. We find right here, Peter said, I got some news for you folks. Mm -hmm. Who shall give account to him mm -hmm. that is ready mm -hmm. to judge what? 
the quick mm -hmm. and the day. So we need to understand the Bible seat of Jesus after Jesus died and he caught a cloud out of here. He's now at the Bible seat of judgment. You got to stand before Jesus. You can't go in the, in the glory without going through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is you got to deal with what I come to do. Amen. I come to die for you, but yet still you have rejected the gift I done for you. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Peter said, now I want you to understand, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and what? And the dead. God wants you to understand, Jesus is the one you got to deal with. Because you say, all power is in my hand. That's what Christianity is, redemption story. I have come to redeem sinful humanity back to the right presence of God. Suffering produces obedience. For this cause mm. was the gospel, the good news, preached mm. also to them that were dead, mm. that they might be what judged, judged according to what to mm. men in the flesh. In other words, it said he went down to the lower parts after he died, mm. and he led captive, captivity captives, and he led them up. But the bottom line, he said he went down and he preached mm -hmm. the good news to the one that didn't hear. It. Mm. Yeah, right. So he said, now even the dead got it. Brothers and sisters, when we are spiritually dead, huh. we're emotionally dead, psychologically dead, yeah. and we're doing everything except getting in that casket, sometimes we die on the vine because we lose the will to live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When we want to quit living, Come on, yeah. living is about going through the struggle, the heartaches, ups and downs of this thing called life. Yeah. Jesus yeah. went through it already. He just showed you you can do it. He said, now all you got to do is follow his example. Yeah. You can do it. Amen. Okay, let this mind be in you, which is also oh, yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. In other words, when you change your thought process oh, in aviation, if you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Oh, yes. If you change the way you look at things, it'll raise up a different result. Yes. But we find right here, Peter's doing some tall talking right here. He said, but live according to what? God, what? In the, in the spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be able to control your will. All right, all right. Take you in. Teach you, guide you. He'll be able to show you right from wrong. How many times said if I follow my first mind? Yes, yes. He always warns us. He gives us away. We refuse to listen to what God is saying. That small inner voice. Yes. You know it. Amen. We all know it. That's right, that's right. It's there. It's there. Because he talked to you individually. Yes, yeah. Matthew 10, chapter verse 30, very has your head all numbered. Yes. If he took time out to count the hairs of your head, right. guess what? He know how to talk to you. That's right, amen. He know everything about you. He know every detail about you. But so that's the biggest thing we're looking at is suffering produces obedience to the will of God. When you understand how detailed, how minute, and how intricate God looks at you, he created the whole universe. But he's concerned about my own you. All right, all right. You might not think you all that and everybody else around you might be putting you down and talking to other different things and you believe in the lie that everybody else is saying but I'm here to tell you that God loves you so much because John 3.16 says but God so loved the world he did what? He gave what? Who in here would give your son for somebody else? Right, right. That's what you love him. The love God has given and now that he has displayed already Yes. How much he truly loves you. Yes. Yes. Run so to take time out right now. Just give yourself a hug right now. Yes. Yes. Give yourself a hug right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you too, Sister Hardy. Give yourself yes. a hug. Yes. That's yes. what I'm trying to tell you. Thank we you. need to hug ourselves and let you know you truly love. Thank you, Amen. And the suffering producing obedience yes. to the will of God. Yes, Yes, amen. To live according to God in what? The Spirit. You do the best you can. That's all you can do. We're imperfect people trying to live a perfect life. You can't do it. But through Christ, you can do all things. You got everybody criticizing you, telling you this, that, another. You don't realize how everybody's just watching you and they ain't worried about them, but they got their eye on you trying to check you. I know for a fact. I messed up, and I'm so glad God did not get off that cross because of who I am. Amen. Amen. If he didn't get off the cross because of me, everybody else got some hope. Amen. Amen. I'm living proof of that. Amen. Let's see what else we got right here. Suffering produces obedience to the will of God. Amen. I 
I know this is soaking in because guess what? It's personal and guess what it is? He's talking to you this morning. Right, 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 now, right, now. right now. He made a difference in your life this morning. Because yes. your name wasn't on the prayer list about like being bereavement. So he gave you another chance. Yes, he gave you another day. One more time. One more time. Ain't that something? Yeah. Well, the good thing is I want you to know right now. The problem you're going through, remember one thing. Trouble don't last all the way. Amen. Amen. So whatever you're going through, it ain't going to last all the way. Okay, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on here now from 7 to 9. Boy, it's getting good in here. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch until prayer. And above all things, have fervent clarity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without bread. He said something. Did you get the butt? Look at verse 7. There's a big butt in the Bible. But the end of what all things is what? At See, one thing about it, you don't know the day it out. Jesus said, I don't know the day it out. Oh, my father knows. One thing about it, when you're born into this world, you're on your way to the grave, y'all. The day and hour, I don't know. But what happens is, in every grave you go to, there's a headstone, there's two things that's interesting. There's a born day to die, a day to die, right. die, and there's a dash. Yeah. The dates of birth and death are never the same. But the only thing consistent is a dash. Okay. Your whole life is surmised in a dash. What are you doing with your dash? The suffering reduces obedience to the will of God. So what you're going through in this thing called life Amen. is surmised in a dash. That's why he said, but the end of all things is what? At hand. Amen. Ain't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore what? Sober. Mm -hmm. And watch what? Unto mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, that's why I gave up Mad Dog. I don't know about your story. I quit drinking Mad Dog. Quit drinking Ripple, Thunderbird. Much shall I climb out drinking some good gin. Good some uh, Ripple, whatever that said was. Cognac. I was getting drunk and cool around. I was ex army and ex navy. Anybody know how to party and get down there with me? But I found out when I read this, he said, You need to be sober. Yes, what? Well, I had no problem straightening up. Come on. Right. March 17, 1993 was the last time I had a drink. All right. Amen. Last time I had anything else. Because God scared the, by Jesus out of me. Oh, yes. When I read this, he says, Watch unto prayer. The bottom line here is, I found out I got somebody that will listen to me. Come on, I got somebody I can talk to in the midnight hour. I can talk to somebody when I'm hurting. I'm talking to somebody when I'm being put down, when I'm being criticized. I can talk to somebody when I need some help. When I'm all alone, I can talk to him. Because prayer always is there. Jesus said I can pray to him and God will intercede on my behalf. Suffering produces obedience. But so the, the only time you pray like you're praying now is when trouble coming your way. Amen. Suffering coming your way. It's like toilet paper. We only use it when we need it. But the bottom line is, he used suffering as a tool to help humanity become obedient. That's the one that really do the will of God. And above all things, fervent charity among yourselves. But charity covers what? A the multitude what? Oh, He's showing you a way out of cover some things. Ain't nobody perfect. Help somebody. Help somebody. God got a way of doing some things. Your life is not about you. My grandmother used to make me mad. She said, son, your life is not your own. You used to make me mad. Yeah. I didn't understand what she was talking about. I understand it now. Your life is not your own. It's to help somebody see God in your action. To be able to touch somebody in a different way. You're going to be the visible representation of Jesus walking in boots and shoes to let somebody see, you know, your kindness, it ain't natural. It must be God inside of you Amen. doing something for me and old me. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Use hospitality mm -hmm. one unto another without what? Great. If you're going to do something for somebody and you're going to be gradually, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He ain't putting on a show. You don't try to impress somebody. Peter said, "Don't do it. If you're gonna grumble about it, you don't want to do it. Just tell him I ain't gonna do it." That's it. That's it. It's in here, ain't it? It's in your Bible, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want you to see. That's why the suffering produces obedience to the will of God. God will is to use you as a vehicle to be an example of Christ.
Christ in somebody's life. You somebody God chose you. He selected you from eternity to pass. And part of your mission, because you have accepted God as your Lord and Savior, is to do the best you can on your way to the casting. Amen. Amen. Do the best you can Amen. to make a difference in somebody else's life. Amen. Well, let's see what's going on. Let's see what 10 through uh, 12 had to say. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as yes, good as the words of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom he prays and dominion over the Amen. Amen. Get the amen. amen. See, that's why I don't need your amen. It's amen in the Bible for me. Yeah. Yeah. He said to every man that what receive what the, the gift. gift. Everybody in here has some unique talent that God has put inside of you. He Ooh. has deposited in you Come in on. your characteristics. Nobody's the same. Yes. Sir. That's why God got a sense of humor. He made everybody unique and different. And everything about you complements the whole master plan of what God has for redemption story. Lord. And that's why he says right now, as every man has received the gift, the problem is everybody has not been made aware that you have a gift Amen. or a talent. Amen. I want you to understand, favor is not fair when God's involved. People get jealous of what you got because they don't have it. Come on. Whatever it is God doing for you, people get mad and tell you God didn't gave you. It ain't you. It's like, what's wrong with you? Uh -huh. But you, need, you don't understand it's bigger than you. Amen. Because the suffering that you, it produces obedience. What he's doing is he's putting you in a place and he's molding you Sir. to do the will of his objective and his plan. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're still alive today. That's why he made old death behave this morning when he touched you when you were laying down yeah. and your bed when you're cooling, boy. Yeah. And your sheep when you're winding yeah. 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 And he opened up your eyes this yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah. There's something you need to continue yeah. to do yeah. in the work I'm putting in your life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. We said right now, even so minister uh -huh. the same what one unto another. Mm -hmm. As good stewards of what the manifold what grace of God. That's why I preached to you, book, chapter, and verse. This is what he gave me to give to you, book, chapter, and verse, is to make his word have a voice. So you can hear it. You can meditate on it. You can see what your eye gave. You can speak it. You can hear it. And all that it feeds your inner man. Come on. Some of us today, we all need spiritual nourishment this morning. We all need to be. Replenish with whatever it is we're reading because suffering produces obedience to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. If any man speak, <laughs> let him speak as the what? Oracles of God. Of God. Talk of God. Talk about God. It always implies God's way of doing some things. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which what God what yeah, yeah. see some of us need to stay in our lane yeah, yeah. I tell you right now y'all don't hear me trying to break out no solo come on it ain't about two it's about to go I'm trying to tell you I stay I know my lane all right yes sir I got I got yes this lady heard about me I went to her church a friend of mine aunt asked me to come over. I ain't had no idea they had no a program to sing. Uh -huh. I get up there and y'all know I used to like to sing that old ship was on. Uh -huh. yeah. And y'all didn't know where Sister Landry come from. They sung all over the National Convention. Yes. Yeah. There was some tall singing going on up uh -huh. there. So I get up there singing old ship was on. They out there busting a stitch. Yeah. They, they cracking this. They boy, he up there saw the crack popping about that's one of the funniest things that's going on. So I want you to understand, I've learned to stay in my lane. Yes, I'm able to preach and teach, not sing. So that's why I don't offend you, great singer. Amen. But he says, what you do is, he stay. <laughs> if any man let him do it as of the ability which God has what? Given him. That's it. That God in what? All things. But 
may be glorified through what? Through Jesus Christ. Everything I try to do is to glorify Jesus so God can get the glory. Amen. Yeah. That's what this Christian walk is all about. Amen. And the things you're going through is so God can get the glory. Right? So that every heartache, pain, and trial you're going through, God going to get you out of it so he can get the glory. Right. Yeah. Right. It ain't nothing you done. Mm -hmm. It's not what God is doing. Amen. He makes a way for it. To whom be glory and what dominion, what, forever amen. and ever, what? Amen. When he say amen, that means it's complete. Yeah. This is Peter saying, I want you to understand, Reverend Land is going to be able to preach this in 2022, March 27th, that somebody's going to be able to get an amen out of the Bible. Yes, because if you do it, thus said the Lord, you understand, suffering produces obedience yes, to the will of God. Amen. 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 Give me 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange, strange concerning the fiery trial which is to deny you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I got to read that to you. He said, but love. Yeah. You ain't just love, but you are be love. You love in advance. You will love back in eternity past before he chose you and he brought you in the time. Before you became a baby and grew up to who you are today. He loved you way back then. That's what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God gave the gift of love to you. And brought so that you are loved unconditionally by God. And he said, but love, think it not what? Strange. It's strange to us because we don't know what's going on. Come on, come on. It's unknown to us. Amen. We can't control it. Yes, we don't want to deal with it. God puts us out of our comfort zone. Come on. God put us in a different place. Amen. He put us in a place that we don't like. But God say, don't think it's strange. That's right. That's Concerning right. what? That any kind of trial, but what? The fiery yeah. trial. Yes. Yeah. 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 Christ 
is beyond our wildest imagination. When they nailed him to that cross, when they beat him with the cat of nine tails, when they spit on him, they put that thorn of 72 horn of thorns in his head, when they did all those different things, he did it, they did it for him. They thought he was doing it to him, but guess what? He did it for us. He took our place. Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, you can't stand what you're going through. Can you imagine what happened if Jesus wouldn't have came? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think you got a heavy load now? Yeah. How you think you would be if Christ wouldn't have came and took the whole load? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Praise God. Peter said right now, he did it for me. He did it for all of us. He did all this, and guess what? The little teen nights you little bit you going through, you got a problem with it. All right. Hmm. All right. You're partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed. See, brothers and sisters, all you see is part of the story. Yes, he's coming back. He's coming back. Come on, man. Well, he's coming back. See, I need you to understand. He's coming back with the rest of the story. He's going to tell you what got what went on with you and how he brought you over. Then you're going to really break out in tears. Yes, sir. Then you're going to really understand what Christ did for you. Then you understand the suffering you're going through. All you want to do is be obedient and let go and let God. So when he come back, he can tell you how I brought you over. Yeah. How I carried you through this hall. Yeah. How I died yeah. your tyranny. Yeah. How I made a way out of hell. Yeah. How I put money in your bank. Yeah. How I gave you some help. Yeah. How I made yeah. the storm go yeah. somewhere else. Well, the storm yeah. that might come to only make you strong. Yeah. But thank well, God yeah. for Jesus. Yeah. He's a hero of the Bible. Thank yeah. God that Jesus came through for the two yeah. generations. Yeah. Thank yeah. God that Jesus got a and he came down for you and I. And then he said, and I. Yeah. If I be lifted up yeah. from the earth, I'll fall. All in unto me. Yeah. Your pain is drawing you to Jesus. Yeah. Your heartache is drawing you to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus yeah. said, come unto me all ye that are heavy laden, and yeah. I'll give you some rest. Uh -huh. Give it to Jesus. Yeah. He's the hero of the Bible. Yeah. He wanna take your load. Yes, Jesus Lord. said, and I. Yes, if I, yes, if you lift me up, yeah. I'll draw you. Uh -huh. And that's why he raised him up.
Just thought yeah, to say. Yes, Realize that every good gift and every perfect yes, gift comes from the Father, yes. which is from above. Yes. Father, thank you for thank your you word. Lord. Thank, thank you for Peter Lord. penning this and the Holy Spirit inspiring him. Yes. Yes. Allowing that, Master, thank you for allowing me to see it yes. and be able to give your words a voice. We pray mildly, precious Master, as you say, your word does not go out forward. Yes. Whether it's here in Oak Hill, mm -hmm. Facebook Live, Worldwide Web on YouTube. Yeah. We thank you right now. Thank you. Lord. We receive the word. We give thank you praise and we give you thank glory. You. Yes. So you can give the glory oh, and give yes. somebody some help oh, yes. when it's yes. time of suffering what they're yes. going through. Yes. To encourage them to hold on yes. just a little while longer. Yes. Yes. We so careful to give you the praise. Yes. Oh, yes. We so careful to give you glory. Let the words of our mouth and the, the, word word the meditation of our heart be acceptable, acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our 
Redeemer. Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty and master's name. Jesus. We pray. The grace, mercy, and truth, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, that the rest will the Bible us now until the saints of God come together again. And they all said, Amen. God bless your heart. May God keep you. Thank you. God spare. We'll see you next week. Amen. Amen. And don't forget to give yourself a hug if you need one. Amen. Amen. You. Everybody have a good week. God bless Amen. your heart. Amen. 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 Yes, sir.